VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. You're now listening to VIP Access Podcast with Aniko. This is the baddest podcast on this side of the continent. I just came from a successful trip in South Africa where I shot um, the first four episodes of this podcast. And right now I'm back at home in Kenya, Nairobi. And I'm about to speak to a gentleman who I truly adore, look up to in the industry. He's been a friend of mine for a very long time and he's been um, doing that shit up for a very long time. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing none other than Provoke. He's a dope music producer and also a member of Umoja Sounds. I forgot to say that in the introduction. What's up? And you can relax. Relax. Ah. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know whether I need to, to redo this introduction, but just be sitting here with you is a humbling moment. I, I think we've spoke a lot for a very long time in the industry and yeah. you know worked together but never really got the opportunity to sit down like this, like now. Like we've had plans to, yeah. I don't know, have lunches. And then we are all so busy until today. Yeah, actually today is uh, one of my most free day today, actually. In the whole year. Ah, yeah. So I'm so lucky. You're not lucky, you deserve it. That's hey, it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We, we need to always embrace uh, what we deserve and not what we are. We're not lucky. We deserve some things. I love yeah. that. I love that. I so love, you deserve my time. I love that way of starting, you know, this episode. And um, I don't know. I feel like that's the kind of person you are. You're a very conscious artist. Yeah. Always been. And I think when I first got to start following your work is from listening to songs you had produced, artists you're working with, and seeing how conscious you were about their sound, their branding, um, and to the letter. You know, you are also a visual um, artist, digital artist, and you sometimes when you get the time, you're also designing digital art. Mm. You know, you did artworks, you did album designs for EPs and stuff like that. And it was, it would always be so distinct. Like yeah. I would see an artwork, I'm like, who did this? And then I started re re realizing there's a trend, like all the dopest um, artworks <laughs> were provoked. And then sometimes yeah. you're even doing for other artists. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times I did uh, artworks for other artists. They actually contracted me to do them, which is which I found actually interesting for me to work on artworks that uh, on songs that I've not worked on. So I started listening to the music to understand what they were thinking when they were working on this music, so that I can come up with an artwork. Nice. Mine, I just know what I was thinking, so it's easy for me to make the artwork. Yeah. And so, so I personally. I think they're so, following you um, keenly when you used to work with Wangeshi. Yeah. But before working with Wangeshi, you worked with several other artists, even Kampmula. Very many artists, actually. Uh, Kampmula are very much later. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a product of Ukoflani Mau Mau. That's when I started doing music. So Ukoflani Mau Mau, uh, if you guys don't, don't remember... Uh, a hip hop group uh, from Mombasa in Nairobi. They cannot forget in, like, that. 2000s. The, these guys yeah. taught me how to work hard as a as a musician. So that time I was still young. I worked with them. Uh, I learned a lot of things from them. These guys were perfectionists and still are even to date. When they get back to studio, they work the same way they used to work. So in terms of the music production or perfectionist, in what sense? Perfectionist in if you write a song they were all in the studio at the same time which is which which was weird a, a lot of times you'll write a song but you didn't you don't have guys to actually criticize you but in mm. this situation everyone is there to criticize you mm. so you, you you end up becoming better at what you're doing mm. when i was when i was started working with them i didn't know things like mixing and mastering I, I just knew how to make beats. Mm. Dope beats. We like beats, but I don't know how to do mixing and mastering. So a lot of times, the, I, which is weird, Musioka, that's when we started actually crossing paths, but mm. we never met eye to eye until later. Um, also Ambrose. Ambrose Mandugu Digital. We met there. We met through Ukoflani Mau Mau. So being perfectionist also around them, they made me actually understand what I'm doing and improve it mm -hmm. every day. So in a day, you could have recorded almost 10, 15 songs in a day. And all of them are dope. So even up to date, I have songs that we have never released. And I don't delete stuff. I have things in my hard disk. Yeah. Which hard disk are you using? Because mine are, is always crashing. 
which brand is <laughs> there's this this one one big ad disc have it's uh, it's, it's, it's is it a seagate it's a seagate and you have all this content all these songs i have them there's an wow. ep that 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 uh, cannibal was working with nazizi i have it there mad yeah i have a lot of songs there one day i'll share them one day i'll share mad. them mad so you you mention um ambros yeah. Mand- mandugu digital many people know that brand that producer yeah. that sound you know yeah. as mandugu digital and they don't know even he's called ambros i'm lucky to know he's called ambros and you know we've worked together even yeah. um onomoja sounds which is a, p- a producer group that you're part of yeah. and you are as umoja sounds collaborating with various artists across the continent so how did ambros you know influence you or inspire ambros, you ambros has always been that that big brother who shows up in a studio and 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 wants to teach you stuff so uh, ever since i was a young guy i used to go to the studio at bruce's studio that time i have your school uniform everyone wants to chase you away but ambros was the guy who was, was like come come just sit here so I, i'm not learning anything directly but just sitting there with him i learn So we really lacked a lot of people like Ambrose in the mm. industry at that time but Ambrose was there. Musioka again was Musioka was was a bit of Musioka likes being an introvert but he doesn't know he's an introvert. That's what I'd say. He he's that person who will hide in a corner and do mm. his stuff not that he's he's a uh, he has ill motives or something he just works like mm. that but ambrose was a guy who you in a session you learning things he's dancing he's jumping on the other side he's playing piano you're learning we, we we a lot of producers actually from kenya have learned from this guy which uh, we don't credit him for and we are grateful for for that we're grateful for his uh, his uh, being in this industry and how did it come up to this point in 2021 where you decided together with your partners and you know um fellow producers that we want to start a group called Umoja Sounds because I think we have seen dope producers yeah. in the industry even well Musioka now has decimators but it's not all other accomplished producers who come to this stage or level that they form a group and then they you know dedicate their self and craft to various artists i think even if i was to compare you with musioka musioka has his label yeah. and artists signed to his label and they're almost exclusively working with those artists unless if somebody comes and hires him to, you know for their album or something else which is something different because he might not have the time but i feel like the way umoja sounds has come into the industry it has opened itself to the industry yeah. like even i'm an industry person but yeah. i've learned and got to know a lot of artists through Umoja Sounds like i didn't even know about um Aerial Ways you know from yeah. Rwanda and it was until you guys came to my office and played me some music and i was like who's this chick and then you're showing me her youtube you're like look she has millions yeah. don't you know her so i love what um you are doing and what Umoja Sounds has so far done so i want to know how you know that idea came about and it's almost like you guys hit the ground running um we we actually didn't hit the ground right? <laughs> it just looks like it. Um, that was how we, it was it's it's a it's an ongoing project that has always been there we just found a name for it late uh, like late 2021 mm-hmm. um if you if you actually know my history uh, with with uh, artists i'm that guy who likes working with the new artists i i I 100% love working with new artists because working with the older artists or the guys who are already in the industry is a bit to me I don't see like there's anything I can add in their career they can simply go to any other producer and do the same thing they're yeah. doing um as for Moja Sounds uh we we were working on a lot of songs with uh, one of my partners Robert um Robert is uh is someone i really take serious as a friend and also as a business partner so while we're doing the music mm-hmm. uh, we were like okay a lot of times we work with artists and we forget the guy who's at the background the guy who's making the music yeah. so how about we come out we come up with a, a producer outfit that makes music with the artist and collaborates with the mm. artist and a lot of 
a lot of artists in in East Africa have not collaborated with producers. They work with producers, not yeah. collaborate with yeah. them. Yeah. So how about we make that? How do how we come up with that? So right now, guys know me and Ambrose, but we are more than actually three people. We are we are a lot of young producers also mm. and um, artists. Uh, one of the artists we we actually put in Moja Sounds uh, fully is Frederick Muller. He's mm-hmm. from Tanzania. He's very multi-talented. This mm-hmm. guy is uh, he amazes me every day. Yeah. By how he just functions as yeah. a person, how he functions as an artist, his talents and his thought process on everything. Mm. Um, apart from that, we collaborate with other producers who are not maybe in our outfit, but yeah. we still co- collaborate with them. Guys like Keda Great. Keda Great is uh, he's a Burundian, but he's lived in Kenya. He's he's one of the most unique producers I know in in Africa right mm. now. If you've heard um, Whiskey's album, Balance, the song called Balance, number is it number two? You'll just notice this is a different song, and is, that is. Is he produced. not the guy who actually received? Um, he received. Um, no, that's Gigs. Uh, Gigs is is a Kenyan producer okay. who lives in Texas. Okay. Who, uh, who recorded also, Thames? Yes. And Whiskey. Yes, and he yeah. received a plaque. Received I a plaque. saw that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Kada Great produced a song on that uh, the last Whiskey album. Oh my god! If you want to know his sound, he's. He, he did 90% of Nyashinsky's uh, last album. Oh my goodness. I love I love to hear this, he right? And he this did, is uh, why I'm free. doing this podcast because yeah. you know, we have to speak the truth, right? Yeah. When someone like Whiskey is successful or someone like Burner Boy, you know, the entire continent is always like Nigerians, yeah, yeah. West Africans, yeah. Afrobeat and we forget to credit, you our, know, our all the people yeah. who are part of this project. Yeah. And I would wish for this um, continent and industry in Africa, I mean, to look at all creatives and artists and producers as equals. Because, I, I, hey... I feel like East Africa downplays a lot of the talent we have here. Yeah. And we need to celebrate this And maybe because we're downplaying day. ourselves, then we're downplayed. We because, always downplay Because ourselves. I feel like we are being downplayed. Yeah. You know? No, we downplay ourselves first. Okay. It starts... It's, the charity mm. begins at, at home. home. When we don't play ourselves, even our neighbors will don't play yeah. us uh, with yeah. as they're looking at us. Um, we in this, we are we are we are located in such a strategic point in Africa that can actually change the whole and of Africa. And a strategic time. Yeah, strategic time also. If you look at uh, the way Tanzanians are moving, I love what Diamond is doing. He's he's really understanding more about the music business. Mm than just doing music. A lot of times yes. we want to just do music mm. and we forget there's the business. True, true. So um, we need to take put a lot of emphasis in understanding the business. Uh, the other day I was having a conversation with someone who um, I was like, if I invest in your music right now, I want 50%. He was like, no, I can't have 50%. That is my... You know, I'm like, no, it's not your music. Even if I don't invest, if I make a beat on your on your on your project i own 50 percent of that song yeah automatically without you signing anything yeah. so that knowledge by itself is so basic yeah and a lot of artists don't know it don't and know. this this person i'm talking about is one of the established yeah. artists right now so that actually i felt Says sad for that because you if you don't know what about the other guys who, yeah. are, who are still young and trying to come up. Yeah, and that reminds me, a friend of mine um, is an artist in South Africa. I saw she posted a tweet and I didn't even retweet it, but it really, you know, touched me. She said, why is it that as artists or singers, we spend so much time, you know, making the music and then promoting and doing interviews and I don't know what, and we don't involve the producers of the project who need to receive royalties from our, you know, project so if i'm promoting the project and you produced it and you will be receiving your royalties whatever percentage it is it is in my interest and in your interest for you to also you know be championing this project promoting it and so she was saying producers need to get out of the studio that's why i'm telling you you know to the world collaborating with the producer and working with the producer two different things 
I I get you. A lot now. of times artists work with the producer. Yeah. So the producer's mind is stuck on I've worked with Aniko. Mm. So Aniko takes the song uh maybe she doesn't understand the business around it also. And me being the producer since we have worked with Aniko, yeah. I don't care more about the song. I just wait for my royalties. So if I collaborate with you, I'm collaborating you with you in terms of this is our our let me say our baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to grow this baby. Yeah. We have to take this baby far. That's collaboration. We lack that collaboration in a lot of let me say a lot of African setups. Yes. If you look at Nigerians, they're actually doing it right now. Yeah. They're doing a lot of collaborations. Mastercraft is collaborating with guys. Yeah. Everyone. Fields. Yeah, fields. That is what not necessarily singing, but just collaborating. Yeah. Major Lazer started doing it before. Yeah. Um, DJ Khaled is doing it. Metro yeah. Booming is doing it. But but would you? I mean, I would say that Kenyans are now collaborating more w- between each other. Would you say the same? Do you feel like the, we are Kenyans at least are, making an effort? I feel like there was a time when Kenya to Kenya collaborations were so you know minimal. Kenya Kenya to Kenya collaborations are good, but they are. I feel they are. I'd say politicized. Mm. Politicized is uh, I'm collaborating with you, Aniko, because you're a big artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. Yeah. Then when you, yeah. you, you sh- your shine drops, I will not collaborate yeah. with you when you need me. That's the type of relationship we have here in Kenya. We, we, are no, we don't have genuine, mm. I can vibe with you with co- types of collaborations. There's, uh, there's someone wa- who wants something from you. Then when you yeah. get it, they move. Yeah. So we need a lot of just genuine collaborations. People who look for someone like, let's see what will come out of this. Yeah. You never know what will come out of it. Um, we're supposed to go to um, um, SA sometime. Mm-hmm. And the person you're going to see is, I don't even have heard of someone called Muzi. 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 Yeah, you need to know. I Muzi. think I maybe have had Muzi through Robert. You need to know Muzi. Maybe he sent me a song. Um, Muzi is the brand ambassador of Vans in Africa. He's no. also a brand ambassador of no, Nando's. No, 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 no. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know Mu- I don't know Muzi, but you mentioned Muzi to yeah. me. Yeah, you are the one who mentioned Muzi to me, but I don't know who Muzi is. You that are is the one, one type who mentioned of, to me. That is one type of artist who uh, I've learned from. You don't need a hit song to make money. Oh, you even showed me his social media. They You're understand. like, look at this social media. This guy Do you see any music? Business. But the guy is locking deals day in, day business. out. Business. These guys are making music for Apple keynotes. Mad. You see, that is understanding the business. Uh, I remember I met his manager. They were talking about uh, a lot of guys in Africa are doing the business of music. Guys should be doing music business. Mm. So the business of music is the first thing someone will ask you is how much am I making from this mm. when I come? Instead of seeing it as let me come there and see what I can make later. Mm. And let me let me make this relationship. Let me yeah. let me build it first and get money from it. Yeah. So we we are stuck on starting to make money before we focus on the music. First. Oh, why why are we why are we stuck like that in Kenya particularly? You think? And I'm asking you that because you've been in the industry deeper than I have been. Yeah. I mean, you are the one who who's worked with all these artists, produced them, you know, had hit songs, had highs yeah. and lows. Why do you, why do you think that's the case scenario in Kenya particularly? In Kenya is um uh I'd say it's just society thing. Everyone wants to make money first or generally before the music, before even I talk about the music industry, generally everyone wants to make money. So every, if I leave but my house, people want to make money everywhere. You see, with that mentality, then you can't apply it everywhere. If yeah, I, you, you understand. Yeah, there's an artist too I know uh, in Kenya who makes money a lot of uh, more than a lot of the artists, and he, he let me let me say in lack of better words, he doesn't have so many hit songs. Mm. He's known someone like like Octopizo. This guy is doing business. He's yeah. doing music business. He's using yes. his music to do business, not business to do music. Yeah. He understands what he's doing business-wise yeah. in music yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times we'll want to, to do shows in Kisi or do shows in Mombasa, mm. make quick money, get an endorsement with uh, uh, one of the big brands and make quick buck. Mm. But we forget when what happens when your brand is not booming. Will that bra- big brand get you again? 
No, they'll get the next big guy. True that. Because you don't, you have not created a relationship with them. Mm. You're asking for a quick buck. It's true. So that's how I look at it. We we want to make money first before our our, our shine falls, mm. but we we forget to create the business business relationships that will last us a lifetime with these brands. And also, sometimes I feel like, or also, or even with our own selves, even with our own you selves. Know. And you could have known you more than ten years. Are you aware of that? Uh, yeah, the, the, I guess. The, 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 the first time I remember I met you on your show in KBC. Mm. And uh, weirdly, you were um, in, uh, interviewing Cannibal, and I was managing mm. him that time. We used to love interviewing Cannibal and yeah. Sharama. We used to love those two. I was managing him, I was producing him at that time. I was still young. And then we met again. Uh, when we, we were doing an interview with Ayu Bogada. Yes. I remember and you we, took we were, me I took you to Mlolongo. We took to a matatu. See him, yeah. We were with Enos Olik. Yes. We were with uh, King Kaka. Yes. I remember we... we that, actually, that time King Kaka was even rabbit. He was rabbit. <laughs> we went to his house. He was like, you guys remix the song. I remember we did a, did a remix for uh, Kothabiro. Oh, yes. Yeah, he literally gave us permission to do that. Yeah. Oh my God, that, that was a, a long time ago. That was a long time ago, but that was, you know. See, and that is a relationship. Yeah. Anyiko, you've grown before you even did Anyiko PR. See how long that relationship yeah. is. That time Anyiko PR wasn't even in the picture. Exactly. And we were still. Even that time, you were still, <laughs> I still, I think you were still starting to work with South Soul. Yes, yes, indeed. I was. See how long that is. Yeah. It's a long so time. We lack such relationships. Just and those the are the industry. relationships that move forward. You know, an individual. Yeah. A collaboration, a partnership. Yeah. I I feel you. We and even that. if you look at successful industries, like you know, you talked about Diamond, like what Wasafi are doing. Yeah. Ama Nigeria. Look at what certain record labels are doing. Yeah. You do see that long term relationship. These long term relationships there and um something that someone posted like um, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There's someone who's talking about how much Marvin Records have spent in I saw that. Three months. I saw in that. pushing Aria, Aria, yeah. Aria Star. Yeah, yeah. Millions uh, of dollars. You know, big budget and, videos. I don't know what. I saw that. And um, then he broke it down again. Uh, he was talking about what percent even Ira might, might be making. Like 20%. Mm. A lot of artists in Kenya will not want to make 20%. But they don't understand this is a business. Hmm. If I put money in you, you grow. That 20% of nothing. Everything is a business. I mean, even Rihanna's stake in yeah. her beauty company is 50%. Exactly. You know, so these are, and she's uh, now the richest. There's 100% of nothing, then 20% of, of female entertainers, of or I don't know, the, the richest female artist, musician yeah. in the world out of a 50% stake. So that yes. can. Teach you a lot. Teach me a lot. Should always teach everyone a lot, especially with these percentages. A lot of people look at it like it's uh, selling your soul, but it's investing. And it's one of the reasons why people don't want to wanna be in groups. Because yeah. they're like, Sasa tutapata 100k, then we have to share. <laughs> but imagine you have to share. You have to start with that 100k <laughs> to make a 100 million. You have to start with that. Because everyone has to put their effort. If you if you if you're in a let me say in a in a record deal, people don't understand record deals a lot of times. That's why when they sign contracts, later they cry wolf. Because you didn't understand what percent you own. Mm. You didn't understand what money the record label is putting. You didn't understand what you'll be getting mm. back. So you you end up looking at it like you are messed up. No, you're not messed up. You didn't read the contract and understand it mm. properly. Those are the situations we have in Africa a lot of times. Mm. Even with artists, uh, a lot of artists are artists. Mm. They are not. They are not businessmen. They are not lawyers. But then again, you want to start doing business. Yes. And you are an artist. You need to hire someone who knows the business. Yeah. But then again, they don't want to hire someone because they're like, my cat will be going to this guy. No, I can't pay this yeah. guy a salary. No one wants to even pay, to, to even pay their PR or management. Yeah. 
either you know what they ought what they ought to pay them or even a commission you yeah. know there are people who want you to do for them work but they want they don't want to pay you and then i hate this approach that i find so many kenyans have because i personally work with many artists from across the continent mm. but many kenyans even friends of mine will approach me and say unajua mimi sina pesa kama nigerians ama nini but it's a wrong approach you know i rather you tell me you're my friend and i have 20k to give you Yeah. But first of all they always think like because I work with various artists from across the region yeah. they must be paying me so much but that's not always the case scenario. I yeah. have also relationships that are built with certain uh, say Nigerian labels or yeah. managers. If they call me and say we need you to do this and we're giving you uh I don't know 50,000 I will do it yeah. just because of those relationships, relationships. even with okay. certain record labels. We, so we from outside someone will see like yeah. hey This boy are paying her so much but you don't know this is a relationship. Yeah. Relationships again we are still on that topic you see. Yeah. It's relationships. Yeah yeah yeah. A lot You're of right. Kenyans don't want to build relationships. But why? As I've told you generally even just generally as a Kenyan everyone wants to make a quick buck and move. They're not thinking about how can I keep a nico around me so that when I have a project and ask for help it will be easy. Yeah. Because all the others are ready to do something to keep a relationship they're so ready yeah you know certain artists are like i don't have money to pay you but i i would fly you to come see me yeah, perform come. i'm like okay that's a good deal some artists are like we want to bring you on over to our tour yeah. you know something what these, can you butter are, what can you butter to to get very, the value you want from the the next person there's a very interesting thing about relationship mm-hmm. i up to date the one of the biggest artist of uh, I have a relationship with is Olamide. He's the only person who I can send a DM right now and he responds right now. Mm. But Olamide and his manager they are so cool. So cool. You see that is a relationship. Alex, same thing, and, same to me. And just recently is when I was like, "Yo bro, I need to do something." He was like, "Send me something now." <gasps> Olamide told you that. Yeah. Hey, you see when <laughs> you see when when someone responds like that. Yeah. It's because I don't value him doing something with me first. I value just checking on him. I do, okay, when okay. I DM him, I don't DM him for favors. Mm. Me always DM him. I'm like, "Yo, bro, how are you doing? How is the family?" Mm. And he responds. I don't check on him like, "Yo, that song is dope." Yeah. It will another blow boss, up. No. Another boss man who's changed the game through yeah. his YBNL family. Yeah. And if you look at You know the growth of the label again relationships. relationships and i remember t- let me tell you what i remember when we were at cook studio you yeah. were producing at cook studio I was producing him. and you produced him yeah and um at that time he came with um alex no no then the, the second time no, he no, came no. with fields yes fields yeah, that's and the second time i remember time. him telling me yeah This is one of my producers yeah and i'm coming here with him because i want him to see what we're doing i want him to experience nairobi yeah. to experience east africa i want him to grow i remember yeah. actually the second time when he came yeah i wasn't producing him yeah i think it was musioka but he but still... he called me yeah he was like come 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 let's meet so that's when that's when i met phil also okay but we after that we still have conversations even with phil yeah even before phil's became big i remember the songs he used to release i was like send me that on shade you know and uh that is those are conversations that are very important mm-hmm. i'm not looking for anything from fields i'm just genuinely trying to promote him as a person mm-hmm. as someone who needs mm-hmm. help from someone also you know yeah. I, i'd love to see my friends share my work not share my work when it's big when it's mm-hmm. blown up is now you and you want to start sharing yeah, my yeah, work yeah, no no yeah, no, no. Yeah. share my work when i'm starting i definitely take that relationship very very serious to know this person cared for me when I was still starting. So mm. in Kenya we wait for Aniko to blow up is when we look for Aniko. We wait for Umoja sounds to be big when we see Umoja sounds with let me say Sierra or Beyoncé in studio that's when you'll see DMs from Kenyans. Talking of Umoja sounds how are you guys doing how are you guys are... doing because you you know came into the industry already got an Afrima you know yeah. award nomination for best group in Africa you know not like the group had been 
out there for even three years. You know, it had just been months. Yes, yeah, been months. And uh, already getting been, this, uh, and you, you know, been continental. There for 20 years. But not, no, but not <laughs> as Omoja now. sounds. You yeah, know? Um, the brand itself. But you see, the experience is still there. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a three-year-old. I'm a three-year-old baby with a. Uh, 20 years experience. Have you ever heard of no, that? No, but still, when you get nominated <laughs> for a Freema, they are not looking at past provoke recordings. You know, yeah, they are true, like, true, true, true. what has Umoja Sounds released in the past couple of months? The, but the... these projects were so strong that, you know, go to that yeah. Pan African recognition, which is quite a big this thing. This is what you need to look at it like. Yeah. When you listen to a song done by a new person, an amateur, and a person who's done it for long, you'll notice. You'll know. Yeah. You'll definitely know. Yeah, so us getting that brand, Afrima is not, definitely not... We didn't look at it as luck. We we are, we are good at this. Mm. We are, I've done this and Nico for a long time. Ambrose has done this for a long time. Even Robert has done whatever he's doing in the music mm. business for a long time. So it's just that experience that got us there. The band itself, one year. Mm. The experience is 20. Yes, yeah. okay. And since Umoja Sounds came together, you've had trips across you know certain areas in the con- c- continent you went yeah. to rwanda rwanda tanzania, in tanzania zambia, zambia. Yeah. we've done also we've brought artists from tanzania to kenya we've yeah. brought artists from zambia, zambia to, to kenya, kenya. We, you've re- you produced four, UG. four eps your own of your own we have produced i think 2021 there was out of the comfort zone that was the last one then there was um songs like david Dance like David. Dance like David, and the first one was uh, yeah, emotional attachment. Yes, yes. Then yes. we have a lot of singles. Yeah, we have a lot of singles. And, you go, and um, then now there's a new EP. Now there's Chichnya Files. That is a collaboration between us and J Rocks, and J Rocks and uh, Chile. Chile. Yeah, Chile, Chile is a rapper that uh, who's signed to J Rocks. So we started working on that EP. I think January. Yeah, and it's out. Poketi is a banger. Oh, you, la- you love Poketi. Eh. My, my, my favorite song in that is Fake Friends. Fake Friends, yeah. Fake Friends. That's also dope. That, uh, I, I, knew, I wish I could play you that song the way it came and when it, I, I finished it, two different things. It was a hip-hop song. <laughs> and Jay is also really cool. Jay is a cool artist. Jay is a cool producer. Jay is a cool also guy. collaborated with him on his EP yeah. that came out last year. Yeah, yeah that was... Um, was the name of this poetry in motion yeah poetry in motion yeah oh my god y'all are doing so much this like so how much. many artists are all those you've collaborated with like it's even hard to count it's hard to count what we know is the we first have... ep had um you know kenyan artists had emma cheruto yeah. um uh, Bidi. Tanzanian, uh, malin yeah had uh elisha lai uh, had frederick muller had uh ariel ways no, I realize was not in the first one. We've, we have so much yeah. music. I don't even. I you can't don't even, even know recall. which one is the first one, second one. It's yeah. just like my discography is out there. It's out there. Listen. <laughs> Actually, this year is when we are going to now release a lot of music. Mm. We have not released music. Those ones we were just like, let's try. Now we are releasing music. We have over three hundred songs. Okay, and project. how how's your release strategy looking? Because for instance, the EP came out, Chuchnya Files, and. Yeah. Right after the EP came out, like there've also been other singles rolling. Yeah, Chuchnya Files is uh, we we look at it as a J Rocks project, but we have collaborated with him. Mm-hmm. Then we have our our Umoja Sounds projects. Those mm-hmm. are the singles that are coming out after that. Um, there is Frederick Muller songs also. There is a song we have with Emma. Is uh, I think we'd be releasing songs every week. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's what I, I noticed. Like after the EP, there also yeah. been singles dropping every week. Yeah, we have songs every week. We have a song. <laughs> my favorite song this year will be one we've done with Motoria. Motoria has been one of my favorite producer artists for a very long time. Yeah, I I I met him when I was mixing and mastering his first album. Um, he came to my house. He slept there. Was in my couch. I just mixed and mastered. He's sleeping. Then he wakes up. He's like, "Let me hear that." Okay, let's change this. Then we change it. Then that that's how I, I met him. And that, when I was to listening to what year. he has done, I was like, I, "I just told him, bro, your your talent is 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 way 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 ahead of what guys are listening to yeah. right now. Keep on doing what you're doing. Such a good. genius. He's good. That kid is good. So we have a song with him. The first time I produced him. That's this amazing. is the first time, and even him, 
on that song I, I didn't expect that uh, you wait for it you'll hear it that's amazing <laughs> that's amazing wow provoke provoke so so now you you've been uh, you know listening to this podcast and watching because sometime you told me i i watched a couple of episodes good yeah. job um and i've been asking <laughs> artist questions you know to give <laughs> advice and i usually ask them at random depending on who the person is and uh, like for most producers i would ask questions like how do you you know make a dope record yeah. so i feel for you ask me a, that question ask me that question if for real how do you make a dope, a yeah. dope record there, there's no dope record what's the secret to there's no dope record you'll make your give me, best give me five song. tips give me five the tips the thing is making... with songs <laughs> a lot of people really talk about this like making a dope song there's no dope song the song is dope to the listeners when the listeners decide it's dope it's dope the songs we have released that i don't even like but guys love it so that confuses me in terms of come on this song when i was making it i didn't think of it like that i just th- thought of it like another song we can you know do. why i relate because even my podcast the last season two yeah. certain interviews were I, were my favorite more than others yeah. and then i would now be hyping them and messaging someone like have you watched provokes interview and someone yeah. tells me no actually my favorite was zenias or yeah. this or that so then i come to realize like i have a body of work yeah which are interviews i have favorites and i have some which i feel like didn't go exactly how i wanted them to yeah. go but that's somebody else's favorite you are an artist just paint that's it guys will resonate with what they want, they want to resonate mm. there's no trick to making these things but the biggest trick here is not making the song is the marketing the biggest trick with music is marketing as i've told you again uh marvin records put a lot of money in marketing their music that means you go to tiktok everyone is dancing to that song mm. You go to you go to Apple Music, it's on every chart. You go to uh, Spotify, it's on every chart. Yeah, that is marketing because that song is playing everywhere. Yeah, they've given every DJ in the continent that those DJs are not given that song until they love it. No, they've been paid to play that music. Does it make sense? It makes a lot of sense. So that that is a that is a trick to it. Let, let, let nobody lie to you that y- your song is a hit it will just resonate no these songs that will even become big but they never make money off them mm. it's just cuz they didn't understand the ROI they didn't invest to get back the investment mm. they don't understand that part of the business they're just playing with luck Okay so then what k- advice can you give to all the creatives and artists listening and want to get out of that art that they create and into the business into the business do a lot of research i'd say that a lot of research we in the age of uh, information mm. but what you do with that information is up to you yeah. i'd say take that information filter it out use what you can use cuz that information comes out every day it's new every right now there is someone who's teaching people how to produce music mm. every day teaching you how to do something that is in your field music wise business wise even there's ai right now ai can can make you songs can make you artworks can give you strategies not that all of them will work just filter out what you need and move yeah anything else well how do you cook rice <laughs> <laughs> okay i need to wrap up but i just want to say thank you so much for you know being you for being so hard working and dedicated at your craft like before i ever met you i knew you were so um persistent at excellence just because of yeah. the music i had you produce just because of the branding and also another thing nobody knows about you is you're so conscious about the branding and the pr yeah. like you are you are like at a, a, a mini or a, a, a super publicist in your head because i remember you even see, when i used to be at kbc you would always send me press releases which you would write yeah and attach artworks and songs you know things publicists should essentially be doing yeah. but you're this creative producer who took you take all these things upon yourself and i appreciate that It's, you know uh, uh, the explanation for that is very easy sometimes you'll get people to do things for you 
Sometimes yeah. you will not. No. Also, <laughs> when you get people to do things, they will not do it because it's not their priority at yeah. that moment. So the reason why I do a lot of these things by myself mm. is because I have had situations where I've been let down. You see, this is my life. This is the only life I have. Yeah, I can't so rewind if it. Someone doesn't so if show some, up, if you I give, show up for yourself. If I give someone power to mess up with it, mm. it messes me up also. That person has maybe a plan B in their life. Yeah, Me, yeah, I don't yeah. have a plan yeah. B. Yeah. The other day I was just talking to my mom. I told him, I told my mom, my, my son has to be, if for lack of better words, a baby. A baby, <laughs> you know what baby means yes. in Kenya. We have been we, we have had struggles in our life when we were kids, but my son has to be a baby. That's what I really? told my mom. Yeah, because he has to be that kid in our family who speaks English. Hi. He has to be that kid. We don't have that kid in our family. So why don't you create that for yourself? <laughs> you know. So to speak English. Kwan, you don't want him to speak Lu or Ama, what are you talking about? Speak English. You see those the English speaking kids in any family are the rich kids. Like nah. my son has to be that the rich kids. That kid, when 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 something latest comes out, they they want to get kids want to come and see him and be like, "What's that?" Okay, my dad okay. got me that. That's okay, okay. that's my mentality okay. with that. I have to I have to make sure my Sour. kid gets what I never got in Sour. life. I, I, so I like that's why that. I do everything. Aniko, I I have to make sure in my life I change I change first of all uh, my generation, mm. I, my generation I e in our our family, how we have been where we have been. And just make a difference in that. That's how I look at it. It's, it's not uh, something that I have to do by force. Mm. That's how I feel. Okay. So I I'll do artworks and spend hours and hours uh, improving that. Mm. And that those days we didn't have PR guys, so I was still the producer and the manager. Yes, and the so, PR and the publicist. And the PR and the <laughs> and the bodyguard. Yeah. So, and that and those the days, chaperone. And the chaperone, and you're the guy who will fight everyone when the artist is not okay. You know those those situations were there, and I learned a lot of things from that. And I'm glad that um, there's people in those departments who exist right now, like Aniko PR. I don't have to write this write ups anymore. Aniko, write for me a, a write up for this. So you ask me questions, then you do it. Then I'm good. Then yeah. I know you, you. You that is your field. Yeah. So these days we have learned. I've learned new things. Is let me hire someone who knows that job to do that job. So it's just that growth. These days, the industry also is growing. If, as much as we were looking at it like the industry is not grown, yeah, it is. It has grown a it lot. It has grown so much. Yeah. As in right now, we have kids producing in their bedrooms and they're producing dope music. Those are the things we were looking for when we were young. Those days, you, you, there's two studios. The first one is in Harlingham. The next one is in Calif. The third one is in South B. Mm. You live in and Embakasi. That's that. You live in Embakasi. You don't have fare. You have to go to the studio. Walk. Which is the closest caliph. Walk. Go there. Even if you won't record, you are in the studio. You go back home. You tell guys, I was at Caliph. <laughs> guys are like, you at Caliph? Who did you see? I saw you at Cali. Yeah. But he passed. Yeah. It used and to, guys it used respect to be such a hood. big deal. Guys respect you in the hood because you like saw a, you at Cali. Yeah, it was like a movie. Yeah. Like so these days the industry has grown to the point of everyone can produce music at their con the comfort of their home mm. and still have dope songs. And that is growth. Aniko can be hired as a PR person. These stylists can be hired. Yeah. Uh, these dancers can be those days you hire, you call your friends to dance. Hey, so you want to dance, come, come dance in my video. They dance badly. That's it. Because you didn't know there's a profession called dancers. Mm. Actually, we should talk about the, the, the dancers right now are the new DJs. Do you know that? Mm. They're yeah. the guys, they're the taste makers, they're yes. the guys who will tell people yes, what to listen. Yes, if they said to dance to your song, that's that. So you see how the industry has grown. It has so, really changed. So if they dance your song in TikTok these days, possibilities of you making it big is very high mm. compared to a DJ playing your song. Yeah. So your DJ would pick the song from the TikTok dancing yeah <laughs> okay okay uh, and then what haven't i asked you that you wanna maybe touch on um ai in music mm -hmm. yeah a lot of um 
there's a lot of AI uh, that is going on like for for the last four or five months but uh people think that uh, every job is in trouble in that mm. but it's just you to align um how to use it fast okay. how to make it you make your work easy yeah that's one two uh, two is how you can work with the guys who are doing the AIs. AI in music is uh, a bit different because in production, the AI guys are licensing loop packs. Loop packs are, you can make a beat then break it into pieces mm. like every single mm-hmm. instrument and license that to them. That makes it easier for mm. you to make money. The guys were in trouble as singers and rappers. I feel like AI should be a, another podcast for another day. And then when we have <laughs> Roberts... Robert is uh, yeah, the Robert other member is, of Moja Sons who's a complete uh, yeah, nerd a and geek. geek. Yeah, that that one he knows you know, more about that space. He, yeah. Than I think also me we we, we share we share um lots a lot time. in common in that sense. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's why we actually resonate with him is because uh, I mean more into tech than music than even him. Okay, I see so, the connection. Yeah, so we try as much as possible to bridge this gap between tech and music. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. I mean, Umoja Sounds is dope. I love Thank you guys you. so much. All your EPs are banging. I don't know, like this production standards and quality yeah. is really what we're talking about when we talk about Kenya to the world or Africa to the world. Yeah. If anybody had your songs, it's even in this new EP, the latest EP, should you come any fake friends? Does fake friends have some sort of ama piano yeah, vibes? That's, fake friends. that's the song. When yeah. I heard that song, I said, this song. If it's if we promote it, Ama, if it hits any radio person in Southern Africa, Western Africa, yeah. it's a given. This this song will sit on the radio station. It's so great the way you we, created we look it. To, we look to putting it in South Africa when you're there. It is perfect for that market, you know. Yeah. And for I mean for the entire continent, since it's the kind of like the piano wave yeah. right now. So you guys are really doing an incredible job. And uh big ups, big ups to you, Ambrose Thank and you, Robert. Sanity. And um, and Mula. And Mula as well. <laughs> yeah. Mula is singing. You can't talk to Frederick, but Mula. Frederick Mula. Yeah. yeah. He's, um, he's uh, singing. He's, he's now singing. He's not even <laughs> rapping as much. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, we, came to, we came to know about his singing skills re- recently. So we're, we're utilizing them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, Provoke. Asante Sana. Asante Sana. I hope. You've enjoyed this interview as much as I have. Yeah, I've enjoyed. The only part I uh, didn't like about these interviews, I was told that there's mandazi and chai. <laughs> what happened after to that? This, are, you eating, are you eating money <laughs> for mandazi and chai? It's box. You're not offering people mandazi <laughs> and tea when they come here. Yeah. <laughs> These guys, they're Thank eating you. money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you. That's why we're wrapping off this week with right. um, the amazing Provoke from Omoja Sounds. Um, go out there and listen to all the music Provoke has produced that Umoja Sounds has put out. Um, Umoja Sounds music is available on all streaming platforms. They keep releasing tracks every single day. If you're watching this today, there's probably a new Umoja Sounds song coming out tomorrow. Yeah. We also have another <laughs> interesting thing that we do yes. on the side. It's called Sound by, Sounds by Us. I saw that. That's uh, more of, we do experimental music there. Is that uh, the Alliance? Yes. Uh, you know, sounds Alliance is another thing. So ah, sounds by us. So sounds by us is we 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 are doing lo-fi, literally lo-fi experimental music on that. Just pianos, no singing there. So if you into that type of music, just go look for sounds by us on Spotify. Mm. Then the so- sounds Alliance is more of us just jamming with artists in the studio and making stuff. That's on YouTube only. Brap brap. <laughs> China Mandazi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Provoke. Thank you all for listening, for watching. We'll be back next week with yet another dope music producer, creative, or just artist. The dopest. Full, the full dopest. Stop. Yeah. Podcast on music. Yes. In Africa. Yes, right? <laughs> yeah. Asante, Provoke. Karim Asante. Sana. Mandazi. China Mandazi. Si Mandazi. <laughs> gota, gota. <Yeah. laughs> VIP access. VIP access with a Nico and Africa Loud.